When it comes to Doctor Who, I am... mildly interested. And I mean, how can you not be? It features a British alien who travels around in an old 1960s police box, which is bigger on the inside. Oh, I can also time travel anywhere within the known universe, whether you want it to or not. For nearly 60 years, the show has gone on to produce over 800 episodes, detailing the Doctor's adventures across all time and space. The longevity of the show is partially thanks to the Doctor's ability to regenerate from one body to another when close to death. By doing this, we get to experience an entirely new personality of the same character, which has enabled the show to remain fresh and relevant even today. Usually, whenever the Doctor regenerates, the character has a change of clothing style, as well as a new TARDIS interior to fit their personality. And in the case of this video, a brand new sonic screwdriver. Now, for those of you who don't know what a sonic screwdriver is, it's one of these. And this, and this. The sonic screwdriver is effectively the Doctor's sci-fi Swiss army knife. First being introduced by the second Doctor, the sonic screwdriver has countless features, which has helped the Time Lord to get out of many dangerous situations. It can be used to unscrew items, unlock doors, scan enemies, download data, fail to reverberate concrete, be used as a remote nuclear warhead detonator. The list is endless, but it can't be used on wood. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't work. My favourite sonic screwdriver is this one, the War Doctors. I like it because, in many ways, it actually looks like a functional tool. I also like it because it bridges the gap between the classic era of sonic designs and the modern show. Modern sonic screwdriver designs include the 9th and 10th Doctor's Sonic, River Song's Sonic, the 11th Doctor's Sonic, the 12th Doctor's Sonic, the 13th... So it's safe to say that I don't particularly like this design. Although, given how badly written series 11 to 13 are, I think the sonic screwdriver is the least of the series' concerns. Let's break down its design. Compared to screwdrivers that the Doctor has used in the past, this one seems oddly... organic. It's probably best if I give some context here, so spoilers are incoming. After the 12th Doctor regenerated into the 13th, the TARDIS had a plot malfunction, causing the Doctor to fall out of her time machine, in which she lost her sonic screwdriver. I don't know how you lose something this obvious, but whatever. Later on in the episode, the Doctor would construct a new screwdriver using a combination of Stenza crystals from the villain of the episode, as well as some melted down spoons. Yes, you heard me correctly, this thing is made out of spoons. No, I will not elaborate. As for standout features, this particular screwdriver has a spinning emitter and a rotating hand grip. So this explains why it looks like this, and honestly I do commend the designers and prop makers of the show for creating such an unusual looking device. The Doctor is an alien after all, so why must the sonic screwdriver look like such a human invention? Despite this though, I'm still not a fan of this design. Sure, there are parts of this design that I do like, such as the rotating emitter, as well as the warm glow the sonic makes when it is in use. However, for me at least, it just isn't my cup of tea. That's my cup of tea. So, how will I go about redesigning it? Well, first of all, we need to remember the context of the situation. The Doctor is in a workshop on Earth, and can only create the screwdriver in a limited time with whatever components that are available. So a shiny new screwdriver made to exact specifications wouldn't make sense in this scenario. One thing I would change in this situation is the way that the Doctor created her new sonic screwdriver. The original design looks as if molten metal from the spoons has been poured over the central crystal to create its overall shape. However, for my design, I want the shape of the screwdriver to be more heavily dictated by the components that the Doctor found lying about. Furthermore, I want the design to feel much more coupled together. I want to see rough rivets and exposed wiring on my device to show that it was put together in a hurry. Finally, I want to add something to the design that practically all other sonic screwdrivers are lacking. You may have noticed that none of the screwdrivers have any discernible way of selecting different settings. On a few of them, the central shaft does extend, which could constitute a separate power mode, but even then, there isn't an easily discernible way of understanding how these things operate. Also, how exactly does the Doctor examine any data extracted by the Sonic? Every incarnation of the Doctor just seems to be able to scan a random object, look at the tip of the screwdriver, and say something vaguely informative. Global warming. At least with the Sonic sunglasses, it kind of makes sense. The lenses probably act like some kind of AR interface, which could potentially be controlled by the Doctor's eye movements. Only problem though, is that I don't like the Sonic sunglasses, so let's move on. Now, I do believe that this is probably by design. I don't think that the prop makers building the Sonic screwdrivers for the show would have wanted to put a logical interface that could potentially overcomplicate its design. 
Perhaps a headcanon answer could be that the sonic scooter uses some kind of AR interface that mentally projects an image into the eyes of the user. At the end of the day, it just needs to be a cool looking gadget to get the doctor out of trouble when the plot demands it. However, that won't stop me from at least having an attempt at trying. Now, before I do the reveal, I don't imagine that I will ever do another episode on Doctor Who props, given how legitimately cool I think they all look. So I'll briefly talk about one other device that I think could do with just a minor update. In the Doctor Who universe, the TARDIS isn't the only form of time travel. There are many other options available, perhaps the most famous one being this, the Vortex Manipulator. Introduced in series one of the modern show, this wrist-mounted time machine is often the preferred way of time travel for a lot of characters. It is, however, a rather dangerous form of time travel, given how the user is often far more exposed to the dangerous and volatile time vortex when compared to the enclosed control room of the TARDIS. As a result, characters in the show often state that this device is cheap and nasty time travel, or in the case of this toy, just cheap and nasty. I personally like this little device because of its understated appearance. The dark brown leather casing helps to draw less attention to the vortex manipulator, ensuring that the user remains undetected, especially if they are in a less technologically advanced time period. My only issue with this device, however, is, like with the sonic screwdriver, its interface. Unlike the sonic screwdriver, we do get a set of buttons as well as a small directional pad, but just like the screwdriver, it doesn't have a visible display. It does have a holographic emitter, but it is rarely used within the show. Instead, I suspect it uses some kind of AR interface like the screwdriver does. Also, when the prop was initially introduced back in series one, I don't think it was initially designed to be a time machine, rather just a wrist-mounted communications device for the character Captain Jack Harkness to use in the story. It wouldn't gain the name Vortex Manipulator until a few series later. In the context of it being used as a simple comms device, the lack of a visual interface makes sense, but as a time machine, I think it could do with one. Since I actually quite like how the Vortex Manipulator already looks, I'm not going to modify it drastically. I'm just going to add a few minor features which I think it could benefit from. Anyway, I've talked long enough. Here are my redesigns of the 13th Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, as well as the Vortex Manipulator. Black Archive Catalogue Report, Site 4, January 6th, 1989. At around 9.30am, we received two items of alien technology to be catalogued and stored at the site. The first item has been marked for maximum level 5 security storage due to the possible capabilities relating to time travel. The reason for this is due to the device bearing a striking resemblance to one being worn by the ex-time agent Captain Jack Harkness of the Torchwood Institute although we believe his to be in a somewhat deactivated state. The one we found has some minor differences. For starters, it would appear to have two wrist straps, perhaps to prevent it from being forcibly removed by an attacker. The second alteration we found was that this device has a small display under the cover. We can only theorize as to why this one has a visual display. Perhaps it's a prototype, or maybe a second generation model. As of this moment, we are unsure. The second item has been marked for level 4 security. We believe it to be some kind of sonic tool, akin to the sonic screwdriver that the Time Lord known as the Doctor uses. However, unlike their device, this one appears to be a lot rougher around the edges. I presume whoever made this clearly didn't have much time or resources, given all the exposed circuitry and wiring visible. Most of this we believe to be future Earth tech, but the crystal core and rotating emitter appear to be of alien origin along with the AR interface present above the emitter. The sonic screwdriver also appears to have a visible mode selector, with Gallifreyan text denoting its function. Unfortunately, both the AR interface and mode selector only appear to display Gallifreyan text, something that UNIT hasn't yet been able to translate. As of this recording, both items are untested. This concludes my report. By the time you've received this, these tapes should be safely secured. Though of course, given that this is a black archive, I'll never remember doing so. So, this is my redesign of the 13th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver, as well as the Vortex Manipulator. Overall, I felt that both devices turned out quite well, especially the redesign of the Sonic Screwdriver, 
which I now think actually looks like a functional tool. Starting at the front of the Sonic, we can see that the device has dual emitters. I went for this design choice, partly because when I first saw one of the trailers for Series 11 of Doctor Who, I thought for a moment that the Sonic had two emitters. Specifically, this image here. Even though the actual design never had dual emitters, I always thought that it would be a cool design feature to have, so I've included it here. Like the original design, the primary emitter spins, although in this case the crystal is being held in place with small rivets, instead of some bent metal wrapped around it. The main body of the sonic screwdriver is effectively a few sections of old pipe that have been cut down to size and screwed together. It is here that we see the exposed Stenza crystal, being held in place by three metal rings, as well as a few more rivets along with a bit of exposed wiring. Exposed wires and circuit components are a key characteristic of this design, showing how hastily put together this sonic screwdriver is. A notable feature is this improvised blue emitter, which acts as an AR projector, beaming information from the screwdriver directly into the user's eyes. And finally, at the centre of the screwdriver, we have the primary mode selector, along with two square activation buttons on either side. As for the Vortex manipulator, its overall design stayed roughly the same. Aside from the additional wrist strap, the Vortex Manipulator's button layout has been readjusted with an additional button placed on the left segment of the device. I have also removed the raised metal grille section and have integrated a similar more rounded design into the centre of the interface just above the hollow emitter. And of course the right hand side now has a small screen to display any relevant information for the user to view. Anyways, this has been my redesign of two iconic Doctor Who props. Thank you all very much for watching and until next time. It's goodbye. Ah, uh, finally it's uploaded. Oh, it appears that it's already got some views. Let's see what people have to say. They didn't like it. They didn't like my redesigns. This could mean the end of the channel. And I can't correct this. The video has already been uploaded. It's not as if there's a feature to delist videos on YouTube. I have to do something. There must be a way to fix this. There must be something. There must be something. Time travel. And I have all the information I need to make it work. Alright, I think I've done it. The Vortex Manipulator should have enough power to do a short hop back in time to yesterday. Okay, I should arrive a few hours before the video has finished rendering. Since I won't be awake when I arrive, I won't remember myself deleting any of the footage. If I do, it might create a time paradox. All programmed in. I hope this works. Wait, where am I? This isn't the shelter. Oh no no no, something's gone wrong. But what? I programmed it perfectly. Did I do something wrong? I forgot to reverse the polarity of the neutron flow. Dragon, stop! As a punishment for failing to complete your mission, we send you to the international exile. Consciousness transfer is complete.